Hey, Kara Ustros here with RealAgriculture.com. I am here today at Farm Tech, and it is day three. It is starting to wrap up here. It was a, a good last three days, I think for sure. And I have here with me Angela Brackenreid, who is an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. How's it going today? Good. Yeah. Hey, thanks so, for having me. So Angela just recently did a, uh, I guess, a, were you on a panel or were you speaking on your own? Just me, myself, and yeah, I, and yeah, speaking on my own. <laughs> and you were talking about uh, storage and some of your top suggestions. So do you want to highlight some of those for me? Yeah. So, I mean... Why was I talking about that? Well, the year that we had uh, across the prairies led to really an inability to dry in the field, but also an inability to do much drying uh, with natural air drying in the bin. Um, So that's led to a lot of volatility in storage. And so I was talking about how do we manage that on farm this winter Um, and maybe uh, looking at some ways that we could be better prepared if, uh, knock on wood, this happens again. So what are some of the preparations? So managing tough or damp grain over the winter, um, really the number one thing is use cold temperatures to and, and get it as uniformly cold throughout that bulk as possible. Um, we always talk about you have to look at moisture and temperature uh, in combination, and that's definitely true, but we can absolutely use temperature uh, to our advantage and, and stabilize even higher moisture canola. So you're talking, you had your, your top five suggestions. Can you go a bit into what each of, one of those were? Yeah, so I had um, kind of my top five um, suggestions for how we might be better prepared for this if it were to happen in the future. So the first one was um, maybe equipping ourselves with more supplemental heat. Um, and if you are, at, are well equipped already, which I think a lot of northern growers are, um, understanding the limitations uh, of it. We, we know a little bit more about supplemental heat than we did even a couple of years ago. So um, having adequate airflow, at least one CFM per bushel, having more ventilation than you would with normal um, drying. And why is that important? Well, we get lots of condensation um, when we're adding heat uh, to high moisture grain. Uh, Airflow is really important because we need that airflow to push that moisture to the top. Uh, We also need adequate airflow so we aren't just massively over drying the bottom of the bin and accomplishing nothing up up at the top or like in physically inducing heating at the inlet. Yeah. So what are some of your other suggestions I guess as well? Um, So what else did I I look at? One of the things was um, making sure that we're assessing our airflow and our fan specifications. I think a lot of people assume if they've been set up a certain way uh, by by the retail that it's right. Um, But we we need to make sure that we're checking. Uh, Canola has a very high resistance to airflow. um, And, uh, you know, to achieve that 0.75 to 1 CFM per bushel, um, we need to make sure that, that we're operating at at high static pressures but also with fairly high airflow rates and um i guess how does how does that play into heating too with canola into like quality deterioration yeah so we did we did talk about that because there has been quite a bit of uh quality issues um and unfortunately some heating in in the bin and uh i think the biggest thing that uh, that we talked about that i've been getting questions about is what do we do with it um, and and unfortunately for growers uh, it requires a lot more legwork on their behalf to find markets for off-spec canola it's not as easy as you know we normally can just phone our grain buyer and say hey put yep. a target in for for this and um, it, there are a lot of smaller players the market becomes saturated really quickly um, so we do have a, a resource on canola watch where we try and keep these as up-to-date as possible so I was just encouraging people, Google um, buyers of off-spec canola or something to that effect. Find the Canola Watch article and uh, Jay Wetter, our editor, keeps that up to date. So you farm, I guess, in uh, southern Manitoba? In Is southern that what, Manitoba, yeah. How, how did the end of the year go for you? Uh, yeah, so I guess for some perspective, I have a fairly small farm. Uh, my own personal combine is older than me. So I was, uh, I guess it was a good thing because I was willing to really push it and, and maybe... Uh, maybe not a good thing because I put it su- through some things that, that maybe I shouldn't have and made some messes that I wish in hindsight I didn't. Um, but yeah, I, I, I hope for my sake and I hope for everyone's sake that we don't uh, have to experience this anytime soon. It wasn't fun and uh, it ended up being very late, which, you know, when, when we're f- up against 
short days, really cold days, that makes drying and, and storage even more challenging. And was there anything about this year that, that you learned from in the storage perspective? Oh, certainly. Um, it was a year of learning uh, when it comes to conditioning and, and storage. Um, what can we do with freeze drying? You know, there's maybe a little bit more potential there than I, than I realized. Um, me being in southern Manitoba, I am pretty spoiled. We, you know, we, we usually start harvest early August. Uh, we've got long days warm temperatures to to dry with Um, myself and a lot of people like me are not uh, set up well enough with dryers or supplemental heat so that's something I think we can expect more volatile weather in the future so okay awesome anything else you'd like to add about uh, your presentation or what you what you really want to get the message out to farmers Uh, well um, unlike or, or similar, sorry, I should say, similar to every storage best management practices practice, the, the message has to be that we monitor this very, very closely. Um, we've got elevated levels of green seed and saprophytes and molds and high moisture. It's at really high risk. So uh, we, we work so hard to get it in the bin and uh, it's, it, it deserves our attention to make sure that we can get it delivered and, uh, and get paid for it, right? Okay, awesome. As always, it was great catching up with you again and have a great rest of the farm tech. Thank you.